Rice farming has been her family's economic mainstay for decades. It continues to shape the future of her children. But increasingly, this venture has come under threat. Long dry spells. Yeah, a lot of water is required, and as you can see, I'm struggling to get out of there now. But she is happy there is light at the end of the tunnel. Kenya's ambition to tame waters of River Thiba for irrigation has led to some incredible engineering projects. Thiba Dam and canals to redirect water into rice farms. You open it. Innocent Arimba is the manager of Mwea Irrigation Scheme. He will be showing us how water from River Thiba ends up into individual farms and the role the dam will play. Water will be released from the dam only when it's, very, when it's required uh, at the farm level. Uh, and as you know, uh, the dam will release the, 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 the water back to the river and the water will flow along the current river up to the, up to our, the scheme intake, which is Diba intake. But the invention begins 24 kilometers away in Rukenya. It is here in a valley that the idea of building a major dam was mooted. Thiba Dam. Viewed from above, it is a wall 40 meters high, one kilometer long, a line cutting across the valley. A spectacular view of engineers' desire to stop the force of water and harvest it instead. For the builders and the engineers here, it has been a journey of toiling day and night, putting up layers of soil and rocks to ensure that this project comes to light. And as you can see, it's shaping up as it was designed. The work involving earth and rock began in 2017 and despite facing enormous challenges engineers are now readying themselves to have the first feeling of the dam. This is a major achievement because we are changing lives of the people of Moya. We are also provide, we are also an, uh, ensuring food security in Kenya and through that we are aiming at making Kenya food secure. Engineers will ensure the release of water from the dam is controlled. And that is how the outlet comes in. Water will be guided through the canal across the dam wall and into the river. That is through the outlet. Which currently we are using for diversion, but at the end of the dam, we are installing a pipe inside it. So this pipe is what will be releasing the water through a system of valves that have been fabricated and are about to be installed. And uh, this uh, pipe is going to have a flow meter, meaning we can measure the amount of flow being released. At the same time, the operation of these valves are going to be automatic with an option to going to manual in case of failure. So this, uh, the dam operation manager, in communication with the uh, scheme manager at Moya, will know the program of irrigation and know at what point to be releasing a certain amount of water depending on their cropping patterns there. 
So our system for outlet is a, a submerging tank connected to a pipe. That that pipe has a system of valves that are going to be opening and releasing the water for irrigation. The same system has a provision to ensure the river is never dry. So the same system that releases the water for irrigation has another pipe that has been specifically designed to ensure the amount of water flowing through the river is the same that is required for the environmental flow. So we are not interfering with the flow uh, downstream. The flow is going to be released uh, constantly. It will then travel 24 kilometers across the landscape up to here. Engineers call it Thiba Headwork. This is uh, Thiba Headworks and uh, an, an irrigation scheme has uh, five major uh, systems. Uh, we have the Intex, Intex uh, system, which, uh, which is the Headworks, where we are now. Uh, we have the conveyance system, starting from here, which is the canal that conveys the water to the farms. And then we have the distribution system and uh, the application system. And then finally the drainage system. So in the Headworks, we have uh, the intake uh, gates uh, that lead the water into the intake canal, which is uh, on my right. Uh, so these gates are the ones uh, that uh, help us to regulate the amount of flow into the, into the system. Currently, we are obstructing uh, 3.35 meter cubic per second, and uh, the design capacity for this tech is 12.2 uh, meter cubic per second. Uh, we also have, uh, within the headworks, we have the flush gates. Uh, the flush gate is the one which is used to clean the system by flushing the silt from the uh, head of the weir. So this is the flush gate. Uh, that helps clean the system by flushing the silt which has accumulated upstream of the weir. Uh, the intake system has our, our concrete weir, our intake system has a concrete weir across the, the river and that's what helps uh, build the head so that the water can flow uh, into the intake uh, canal. So uh, currently, uh, as I've indicated, we are abstracting uh, 3.35 meter cubic per second and this, that's mainly because of the low flows uh, in, the, in the river uh, because our irrigation water requirement currently is about 8 meter cubic per second. From here the process will rely on a system invented many centuries ago to revolutionize the science of canals, the lock. In addition to two rivers that converge at this point, the system boasts of canals and tens of locks. The locks control the amount of water to be allowed into the irrigation scheme, while ensuring continuous flow of the river. Both the artificial watercourse and the river must remain alive. And then the water flows through what we call Link Canal 1, uh, actually Link Canal 2, into the main canal. Where we are standing currently, this is the Diba main canal, into which the water gets uh, as now it moves at its, as it's distributed down the scheme. So from the Diba main canal, we have branch canals. Uh, so the main canal discharged to branch canals and we have four branch canals in the scheme. Uh, that's Diva Branch Canal 1, 2, 3 and 4. The canals were built to facilitate irrigation. They ensure water is delivered to rice farms. So this is uh, the main canal uh, checking edge. Uh, as you can see, it has wing walls and then it has a center gate, uh, a center sluice gate, uh, which uh, enable us to regulate the flow along the main canal. If you, you, you open it, when you are irrigating the, the blocks, which are downstream of the skin, and you close it, 
when you are irrigating the blocks which are upstream of the skin. Uh, there is the other structure there, that's a, a, a block of the gate. The block of the gate uh, enables, enables us to, uh, to allow, it allows water to flow into, into a specific block uh, uh, during uh, when it's being irrigated. Uh, uh, so uh, now, like if you want to irrigate this block behind us here, uh, you will lower the uh, main canal jet gate so that you build the head, and then you open the main can uh, the feeder canal offset, and then the water will flow uh, into the main feeder and then get into the paddy fields, which are now the basins uh, from where the crop gets the water. But in the last few years, things have been changing. Droughts are becoming frequent and longer. Rice farmers in Mwea have been on the receiving end of these climatic changes as they handle a crop that consumes a lot of water. Joyce, like many farmers here, cannot manage to have two seasons in a calendar year due to insufficient supply of water. I have a December, and I have a year in Latun, and I have a harvest, and I have a year the scheme manager says sometimes water levels in River Thiba are too low that rotational irrigation has to be employed. And that is how canal locks come in. Now the kind of rice grown here requires a lot of water to grow. That is why irrigation is key. Let me see. Yeah, a lot of water is required, and as you can see, I'm struggling to get out of there now. <sighs> but it's upon an individual farmer to ensure that water passing close by floods his or her farm. Nyambura shows us how it's done. Me ni mefan ni meda po ju pahali kuko na main canal. Nika kuja niki fika kwa shabayangu. Nika weka baria iri majingi e kwangu. Nambura and other farmers of Mwea have high hopes. They believe Thiba Dam is just what they needed to increase their fortunes. Sasa mimi kama mkurima tasaidika na pesa itaongezeka sababu kuna nini season moja tutakuwa tumeongezewa so we shall be busy all of the year so we will be happy because we shall be earning a lot of money anyway Established in 1956, Mwea Irrigation Scheme has 7,022 rice farmers. It's mainly developed for paddy rice farming. Currently, the scheme draws its irrigation water from rivers Thiba and Nyamindi. In Rukenya, the site where Thiba Dam is being constructed, the barrage is almost done and the reservoir will soon start collecting water. It has the capacity of holding back 15.6 million cubic meters of water. In this valley, engineers Stephen Mutinda and Andrew Mutua are marveling at what they have been able to achieve. I have done uh, specifically like four dams, but the ones which I have done, the principles are the same, but they are of lower, lower height. Like the maximum I have done is uh, 15 meters. So for this one being 40 meters is a, is a notch higher. These efforts are geared to empower Kenyans get food. 
look at the big four agenda. Irrigation is at the center of the president's big four agenda. Because from the four pillars, first is food and nutrition security. Now when you provide farmers with water, they are able to crop and from the farm, they're able to get their own food that they can use, you know, for domestic use. The rice that is grown here, farmers before they sell, they, 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 are, they already have their, their rice. The work that began in 2018 will finally come to an end once they start filling the reservoir upon the onset of heavy rains. My name is Enoxicole and this is the Kenyan Historian.